In today's video, we are going to experiment with grainy 3D effects on your text. What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist. So a short while ago, someone on our Discord server reached out to me and asked about this style in particular, what its name was and how to create it. I don't really know the name of it, I just call it grainy vintage 3D typography. It kind of looks airbrushed I guess. Uh, but in today's video, I want to show you some certain techniques that you can use in order to recreate this effect for yourself. This technique can be divided in two parts, creating your 3D text and adding grain to it. In the first phase, I'm going to show you two options on how to do 3D text, one in Illustrator and one in Photoshop. In the second phase of this tutorial, I'm going to show you a couple of options on how to add grain to your design. And after that, you can decide for yourself which method is the best and works best for you. So without any further ado, let's dive into the video. All right, so we just have a simple canvas in Adobe Illustrator with a black background. And what I'm going to do is add some text here. Before we do that, I'm going to change my foreground color to like gray. Let's just add in 50% gray. Click OK. And the font I'm going to use is called PyPy or PP. Anyways, click on create outline. And now we have two separate vector shapes. So we're going to right click once more and then click on ungroup. And now we can move these around separately. And move them away a little bit. And then I'm going to go to effect 3D materials, extrude and bevel. Now you can rotate this to your liking. And if you add depth, this basically will make your shape a little bit more 3D, I guess. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to reapply the effect here as well and we can scale them up so they will cover our uh, entire canvas and let's copy these guys and paste them straight into Photoshop let's scale them up there you have it so if we take a look at our example uh, there's actually some like freehand shading in here uh, and this comes with a custom 3d setup I don't really have the time to get into that right now uh, I would probably do this in Cinema 4d but just for the sake of speeding up the process a little bit if you want to do something like this uh, I'm going to show you a method on how to do that. When, what you can do is grab the magic wand tool, select your vector object, click on this side for example, and I'm just going to make a new layer and I'm going to right click and go to clipping mask and I'm just going to paint in some white here. And next we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, I will blur this a little bit. And with our selection here, we'll just add a mask and we'll just click on this little link thing here and now we can just move our shade or glow or whatever you want to call it down a little bit and this will make sure that it's like not trapped here i guess and this will make sure that it's still like inside of this uh, particular square and we scaled it a little bit so that it still covers the entire rectangle but yeah that's the way i would like add in highlights for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to just keep it the way it was i do want to show you a little bit in illustrator on how to add more glossy 3d effects so Let's go to Appearance. If you cannot find this, you go to Window, Appearance, click on 3D and Material. And under Materials, you can add Metallic to there. You put it all the way up. Now you go to Lighting and you increase the intensity of the ambient light and the other lights. You can basically rotate these around if you want to. As you can see, this will also help you create these like certain glows and glossy effects if that makes sense. Alternatively, if you want to do learn more about how to create these chrome effects, I would highly consider getting into software such as Cinema 4D, on which I have a couple of tutorials on my channel as well. So let's go to this one and we'll do the same. So we'll add another light and we'll rotate that light towards here somewhere. And under the materials tab, we'll add in some more metallic and don't forget to also pull up the ambient light here and now if we zoom in here you can actually see there's a nice fade going on here and here in the three as well so let's just copy these and we'll just start working with these from now on if you want to make that effect a little bit more drastic you can go to image adjustment curves and we'll just basically try and make a curve that will add more contrast in there so that the shine is a little bit better visible if that makes sense all right looking good so the next method i'm going to show you on how to create these 3d effects is in adobe photoshop itself we'll just grab our text tool and we'll type out something all right so the font we use here is called comment black and what we're going to do is make sure that this color is also set to 50 percent gray next we're going to go add a bevel and emboss layer and i'm going to just reset this to default so you can follow along so the first thing you want to do is change the technique from smooth to chisel soft. You won't be really seeing that much of a difference now, but you want to add in depth all the way to 1000%. And then you want to go and up the grain to a point where like almost everything is covered like this. Now you can play around with the highlight and the shadow. 
and you can basically make these as intense as, as you'd like uh, usually somewhere around 75 percent is probably enough and then you can also change the angle if you want to to determine whether where you want the highlights and the shadows to be for me something like this is fine next we're going to right click and convert our text layer into a smart object so next we're going to go to filter camera raw filter under the detail tab you'll just click on the slider for noise reduction and slide that all the way up and lower the detail and as you can see this removes these weird like lines that the chisel effect gives you next we'll group these guys together on text layer and the next thing we're going to do is go to adjustments and click on the gradient map here and we want to clip the gradient map towards our group here so that it only affects our text and not the background color here next we want to click on the gradient and we're just going to play around with some colors all right now that we've added in some color what i want to do is convert our text layer into a smart object and that's because we're going to dive into the grain part of this design so we'll hold all our option on our keyboard and duplicate the text layer to the top here and we're going to apply some filter effects before we do that, make sure that you press D on your keyboard and then press X on your keyboard. This will ensure you that your front and back colors are turned into black and white again and then you switch to black and white with each other. So your foreground color should now be white and your background color should now be black. Next we're going to go to filter, filter gallery and the first thing we want to experiment with is the grain. You can find it under texture and you have all types of different grain uh, variations. One that I really like is clumped, it can be for a really nice subtle uh, but larger grain as you can see so now that we've added our clump grain let's click ok here and next you do want to go to image adjustments posterize depending on how much detail you want in there uh, you can change around the levels something like seven here should do the trick i think you want to go to adjustments again here and then click on hue and saturation lower the saturation all the way to minus 100 and now you want to change the blend mode to multiply here and lower the opacity as you can see we now already created a base layer with these subtle grains next thing we want to duplicate this layer and basically remove all of the effects so we'll clear the smart filters and change the opacity back to 100 percent and change the blend mode back to normal and once again we're going to go to the filter gallery and this time we're going to go and add a regular grain with a higher intensity perhaps we'll keep the contrast at 50 and you can see that there's a lot of color grain in there and we don't really want that so we'll just go and go to image adjustments hue and saturation and we can change this blend mode however we like i think i want to do mine with a blend mode overlay lower the opacity to maybe 50 percent and let's just group these layers together and we'll call them grain so you can see uh, actually what we've done so far looking good all right so the next thing you're going to do is go to adjustments the curves layer and basically make the whole thing a little bit lighter perhaps all right so if this is happening you can just release your gradient map here uh, and jump that all the way to the top and group your grain and your text layer together and then just clip your gradient map towards your group here down below and there you have it these colors probably need a little bit of tweaking looking at them and one way to really spice up this vintage is to add another color in the middle of this gradient map uh, like this let's see if that works and as you can see this really brings forward the grain effect here um not really happy with this actually so i'm going to remove this one uh the orange one however i do seem to kind of like essentially you can just keep on experimenting and creating with this uh, another thing that might be interesting to do is under your gradient map here add any curves and do this so by making this ring as you can see you can add in like an extra chrome layer if that makes sense of course you don't really have to do this in this case it kind of works for the bottom text and the, the the letter d here but for the three it doesn't really work so i'm just going to make mine invisible for now however what could be really cool is uh since this is all procedural you can just go back into this text layer and go back into the grain text layer and change the text here so you can do this you may need to uh, make the canvas width a little bit larger so we'll just change ours like that save this and as you can see it's now here and also now here and what could be cool is if we add in a glow here so we'll just go and click on outer glow here we'll reset to default change the blend mode to normal and up the size a little bit like this and we'll see what happens if we save this as you can see this creates some really cool stuff uh, and you can also see the grain inside the glow right here and perhaps it makes it also a little bit more interesting to do a subtle stroke a lower opacity maybe and a really subtle inner shadow just to add in a little bit more depth uh, and what you can also do of course is if you really want to experiment away make everything super weird 
is go grab a basic gradient. Maybe we'll make it reflect it. Reversed somewhere like this. Change the blend mode to multiply or maybe even like divide or difference if you really want to experiment. And we'll clip this to the text layer here. As you can see, it's also adding more colors. So the more gradients are in there, the better it will look eventually, I think. As you can see right here. So there you have it, guys. A couple of methods in order to create a 3D text add in some grain and give your text a retro look. I'm gonna keep on experimenting with this. You're probably gonna see the end result in the thumbnail. Uh, if there's any major changes to this, I'm gonna show you in the comments down below. But personally, I only think I will be actually changing the gradient map here to let the colors pop a little bit more. If you wanna get the Photoshop file and work with this yourself, experiment a little bit with it, you can get it through my Patreon channel. If it weren't for my patrons, there wouldn't be Dreadlabs because creating these videos takes a lot of time. Time that I wouldn't have if I was forced to do a daytime job. As a thank you for becoming a patron member, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials. A permanent 15% discount in my Assets web store. Full access to all of my past live streams where you can see my full design process and an exclusive Discord role. There's also a slightly more expensive tier that gets you access to exclusive tutorials and even more project files, notably the ones from my Creator series. If this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description. But if you do not have the budget to support me in that way, of course it's completely fine, because leaving a like, a comment, and a subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, already helps out a lot. In the past few months, you've started doing that more and more, and it really helped my channel grow. So it actually does make a difference. So with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.